Hey there, Bulldog fans, and welcome into the Bulldog Blitz. I'm your host, Mark Minner. Coming up on today's show, for the fifth straight year, the men's basketball team is going dancing. The women's basketball team will take on Cleveland State in the semifinals of the Horizon League Tournament. And over 60 football players have been named to the All-Pioneer Football League honor roll. But up first, Sunday night, the men's basketball team will find out where they are going to be playing in the 2011 NCAA Tournament. The Bulldogs are headed to the tournament, riding a nine-game winning streak and a win over Milwaukee in the Horizon League Championship. The Bulldogs won big on Tuesday night, 59-44, after jumping out to a 25-8 lead to open the game. Butler was the two-seed playing at Milwaukee, who was hosting the game as the top seed. Milwaukee was the top seed despite a three-way tie at the top of the league in the regular season with Butler and Cleveland State. Butler now has a record of 23-9, playing the best basketball of the season. After the game on Tuesday, former Butler player and now Butler Bulldog radio analyst Nick Gardner shared his thoughts on the victory. In a crowd like this, the charged atmosphere, 10,000 fans in here screaming, the dogs came out and just delivered the first punch, it quieted the crowd. You knew Milwaukee was going to make a run. And I think the word of the night is resolve. These guys showed resolve in defending and coming back uh, from those runs that the Panthers had. And uh, the, the quick start was key. And again, answering that run, a 16-2 run by the Panthers, quickly answered with a 12-1 run by the Bulldogs, put this thing on ice. This weekend, it's women's basketball time to shine in the Horizon League. Friday night, the semifinals of the championship tournament will take place up in Green Bay. Just like in the men's tournament, Butler has the two seed in the bracket and will face number three, Cleveland State. Butler coming off an incredible 64-38 win over Detroit in the quarterfinals on Wednesday night inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. The game was never close and Butler had held the Titans to just 12 points at halftime. Speaking of 12, that's how many Butler players got into the game and all but one scored in the contest. Chloe Hamilton led Butler with an impressive night from the field in the second half. She scored all 16 points in the last 20 minutes and did so after picking up a couple of early fouls and recovering from a concussion. Fellow senior Brittany Bowen led the Bulldogs early and collected 13 points. It should also be noted that this is the third straight season that the Bulldogs finished in second place during the regular season and in doing so guaranteed a chance for at least a trip to the WNIT. That's if they don't make it to the NCAA tournament. Let's take a look at how the bracket stands right now for the Horizon League Championship. Well, first we're going to take a look at the results. Green Bay getting the 89-41 victory over Loyola. Butler takes the 64-38 win over the Titans. Cleveland State takes care of UIC and a much closer one by three points, 61-58. And Wright State the 63-58 victory over Milwaukee. Green Bay, that one seed, getting that big victory over the Ramblers. So now, here's the semifinal matchups. Green Bay will play Wright State, that one up north in Wisconsin. And Butler will take on Cleveland State, who is the third seed in the tournament. So a couple of great matchups. Cleveland State, the defending champion in this Horizon League tournament. The championship we're speaking of is on Sunday at 1 p.m. It can be seen on ESPNU. Time now for some news and notes around the Butler Athletic Department. Butler football gearing up for the annual spring game in about a month's time. But this week, the team received some great news in the classroom. 63 players were named to the Pioneer League Academic Honor Roll. That's the highest in the history of the football program, the second highest among schools in the PFL this season. Sophomore linebacker Jordan Ridley named to the first team, and 63 players make up 64% of Butler's fall roster. Senior Jennifer Chastain will be heading down to Florida for the Rebel Games over spring break, along with the rest of the Butler softball team. This past week, Chastain was named the Horizon League Softball Pitcher of the Week. She notched her second win of the season in the Lady Bison Classic, including a complete game shutout in Butler's 5-0 victory over Appalachian State. Also, one last note, women's basketball seniors Brittany Bowen and Chloe Hamilton were named to the second team All-Horizon League this past week, and fellow senior Alyssa Pittman was named the sixth player of the year in the league. Hamilton leads the league with a 59% field goal percentage, and Bowen is sixth in points per game with 15.5. Pittman is tops in the Horizon League with 11.8 points per game off of the bench. Coming up next, we've got your Blitz Breakdown. Stephen Peake and Alyssa Garfinkel will join me in studio. Stay with us right here on the Bulldog Blitz. Hey there, welcome back on to the Bulldog Blitz. It's time for our Blitz Breakdown segment, joined now by Stephen Peake 
And Alyssa Garfinkel, Stephen Peake, the sports editor for the Butler Collegian. Alyssa Garfinkel, the multimedia editor. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. Well, let's talk about this Horizon League championship season. Spring break around the corner, but it's, it's basketball taking center stage right now. Let's talk about the men's basketball tournament. They take the championship over Milwaukee. Milwaukee had got them twice this year, but Butler got them when it counts. Steve, I have to ask you, was this the biggest win for Butler this season? I'd say yes by hair, very closely, uh, their best game. Uh, it came at the best time, perhaps. I thought they were playing some great basketball down in Hawaii during Christmas. They looked really strong against some unfamiliar foes that time. But I'd say that this is the biggest game on the road, like you said, against a, a team they hadn't beaten yet this season. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. I think it was one of the best games we've seen them play as a team in general. You know, very uh, many of the guys were very great contributing factors for them. And I think it was a great time for them to show their senior leadership as well as the younger guys coming in and stepping in. Well, and maybe the thing that impressed me the most was the Bulldogs had gotten in foul trouble early on from Hill, Smith playing with four fouls late, but it seemed like you know, they were able to still be aggressive. They were still able to be assertive and kind of take control of the game. And it looked like this is a team that's, that's tournament bound. Yeah, there were some, some great individual athletic plays, I think, to avoid fouls or be smart. Or, you know, sometimes the thing that goes unnoticed is the letting the other team have, you know, have two points to save that foul. I think that came up, came up big when it counted. Yeah, and I definitely agree. I think that it was, it was really a great time for them right now. They have, we've seen them kind of struggle, but at the same time, there were guys in foul trouble, and we, at times you saw them kind of playing a little timid, but they slowed it down, they played their pace, and ended up with a win. And, and, and the other thing that, that should be said is that the fact that Butler jumps out to this huge 25-8 start. You knew Milwaukee was going to be making a run later in the game. They did, but Butler withstood the storm, and that's what really counts in that NCAA tournament because it's a game of runs, basically. That's right, yeah. Just because you make the first run doesn't mean you're going to have made the last run. And so you know, that's why you play all 40 minutes. I uh, thought the bench did a great job, especially Garrett Butcher, mm -hmm. stepping up and, and being able to combat those runs when those, those go-to guys normally either had to play back or play on the bench. Okay, well, let's move on here. Let's talk about now they moved to the NCAA tournament. They were the two seed in the Horizon League tournament. What kind of seed do they get in this NCAA March Madness? Steve? Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be a 10 seed. I think it's going to be a okay. higher 10 seed. Um, it's hard to predict what regional because there's so many factors to that. But I, th I think a 10 seed is a good seed that they deserve and, and good for them as well. Yeah, I agree. Looking at their R RPI right now, we've seen them you know, play tougher teams, lose to tougher teams. So that may not help them as much. But I think they're going to be in the 10, 11 range. And that, that's probably not a good thing if you're the 8, 9, 10, because then you've got to play that 1 or a 2 seed. Like, you know, I, I don't know what you're going to end up with, but how, how likely is it that, that the Bulldogs, if they get that 8, 9, 10, can make a run in the tournament? Alyssa, what do you think? You know, I want to say they can go all the way, just like we saw them last year. You know, they were the underdogs. It was the Cinderella story and everything. But I don't know. I don't see them going as far. I think they have a lot of factors right now. I think, you know, they have some guys that are here and there showing up. And we've seen, you know, Sean Van Zandt step up, Garrett Butcher against Milwaukee. So I don't see them getting as far as they did last year, second, third round maybe. I think that they've set themselves up to do the best they can. I know that much at least. Uh, I, th I think I know I'd rather be the 10 seed and play a, a two seed this right. year because of all the parity in the top 10 of the league. Um, I, I think I think a Sweet 16 isn't out of reach by any means, especially the way people have been stepping up. It's not a three-man show or a four-man show. It, it's really a seven-man show if you look at the roster. Yeah. Well, and we've seen a lot of upsets too, though. So you got to think, you know, Duke lost the other night. So we you got to see who else is playing, how they're playing, and what it comes down to. Okay, let's move on. We now are talking about individual players on the team this year. And it's been interesting to watch the transformation throughout the season. Some players you thought were going to be big, uh, maybe had a so slow start. Shelvin Mack, uh, case in point, but Shelvin Mack, Matt Howard getting the uh, all-league team selections. But if you could take a player that you thought was your most improved player, is it Andrew Smith? Who knows? You know, who would you say it is? Take the words right out of my mouth. Okay. It's Andrew Smith, hands down. Okay. Um, both because of, you know, he's an underclassman. Yeah, he's stepped into a role Butler necessarily hasn't had always with that large, big-bodied center. Uh, that and his play now is, is miles apart, way better than it was in November. He's really stepped up. I'm going to go against that. I'm going to go with Chase DeGaulle. I think he has been a man that has, you know, we haven't seen him play. He registered his freshman year. He didn't play that much last year. And this year he is coming out and 
making big plays, being a great leader. And as a junior, he is playing great right now. He's, you know, making shots when they need him to. He's stepping up, playing great defense. So he's an all-around. He's worked hard over the summer, and you can see that. Yeah, I think Chase DeGaulle, I think you're right, Sean Van Zandt also in, mm -hmm. in that starting lineup now. And if you could pick now the MVP of this team, is it undoubtedly Matt Howard that is that is driving this team this season, Matt? Yeah. Or Steve, uh, I, I <laughs> not Matt Howard. Uh, Steve a little bit shorter. Uh, <laughs> I, I I've think seen it, you dunk, though. Oh, I don't know where that was. <laughs> but I, I think it, it hands down has to be. Um, a lot of the guys have stepped up, and everyone's had their moment. It hasn't always been Matt Howard time like some right. thought it might be with Gordon Hayward leading. But, but Matt has the most versatile skills. We've seen him bring the three-point shot out a little bit more. Uh, his passing is, is still underrated. You know, some people don't always, don't always not notch up to that the passing level. I think it has to be him. All right, and yeah. listen before, we've got to cut you off because we've got to move on here. But we will start with you on this question. <laughs> Women's basketball now. They advanced the semifinals up in Green Bay. You know, they're going up against Cleveland State, a team that they were battling with right at the end of the regular season. Is this team going to be able to beat Cleveland State, who was the defending champs last year, and then advance to Green Bay? And, and you know, what, what do you see happening in that semifinal matchup? I see them definitely beating Cleveland State. I, I think they're going to do it. I, you know, they have so much motivation and passion right now from talking to all the players on the team. They want this more than anything right now, and they know it's their time. So I think you're going to see Chloe Hamilton, Bree Bowen, Claire Freeman, all of them right now stepping up. And I think it's going to be a great game, but I think they're going to win and have to end up playing number one Green Bay. I think this is a, a team in every sense of the word. They, they really work well together on and off the court. Uh, they have a sense about them and an energy about them on and off the court as well. I think, it's, I think they're going to do it. You know, they already had that double-digit win. And Hinkle barely lost on the road. Cleveland is just a hard place to play uh, any sport in, I think. And I, I think they're going to do it. I, I think it's going to be not as close as people think it will be. And, and you know, to your, both of your point, you know, they are playing great basketball right now. They do really want to win. Case in point, the Detroit game where they held them to 12 points at half. It's the best defense they've played all season. Just a mammoth victory in that quarterfinal matchup. But then they will have to go on and play Green Bay, probably, we're going to assume, in the semifinal matchup. Can they beat Green Bay at Green Bay? I think, you know, I think it's going to be a great game. I honestly think that they're going to come out and just give everything they can at that point. Can they beat Green Bay? I hope so. I really hope Only they. Only one team has been able to do it this season. I though. really hope they can. I, you know, I would love for them to. That big upset, but I don't know. I'll translate, Alyssa. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> the, the answer, unfortunately, is no. I, again, much like Butler beating Cleveland State by not as by more than people think they will. I think it'll be closer <laughs> than people think they will. But Green Bay on their home floor, uh, you know, they they're rolling this year. They roll every year. I think they're well coached. Very very well coached team. And, and they know their roles, and, they, and they've got some, some very talented players there. Green Bay, top 11 teams in the nation. Yeah. Okay, now finally, our last portion of this Blitz breakdown. It's everybody's favorite. Steve, the toss-up <laughs> section. You've yeah. been away for a little bit. What is on your mind? Yeah. Women's tennis is on my mind. Women's tennis, Absolutely. Okay. Uh, they play tomorrow at home. they got some home matches here. It'll be nice since they've been on the road lately. Uh, but they're, they're, really, they're really bonding well together. The reserves are helping from off the court. The pl players playing on the court, are, they know their rules. They're doing their shots. Uh, winning that doubles point always helps, and uh, they've got some really great senior leadership, too, in Gabriela Bobrowski. Well, I, I think it's very interesting. You know, I'm, women's tennis to me, tennis in general is just, you know, fascinating to me, but I think it's a great time for them. You know, they're six of, they've won six of their last seven matches, and I think that's something that's really great and a big momentum for them right now. So... I think that's going to be very interesting. They're beating teams that are even with them that they wouldn't have beaten the last couple of years and actually beating them by, by large margins. So. Starting out 0-3, it's good to see them making a little bit that's of run right. late. Lissa, what's on your mind? Um, I'm still interested about the whole, you know, baseball, softball right now. I, baseball right now is 4-4, four and four, and, you know, they're playing better, a lot of lineup changes, but I'm interested to see what else can they do. You know, they've been struggling in the past years. What else can they do to make above 50%? Yeah, I, I said a couple weeks ago I'd love to see them get 20 wins. Right now they're on pace for it. They're looking pretty good. Um, again, much like women's tennis, beating the teams that last year they would have lost to by mm -hmm. three runs, you know, putting up double-digit runs against right. Taylor and t teams like that. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see how they do over break and, and taking the time where they can just focus on baseball. But if they're at 20, 25 wins by the time they get barely in the conference season, it's going to be a great year for them. It'll be interesting to see. They've got a lot of games coming up this spring break. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Blitz Breakdown. Alyssa, Stephen, we'll thank see you, you next time. Thank you very much. All right, that's Alyssa Garfinkel, Stephen Peake. Coming up next, we've got a conversation with Courtney Licklider regarding Butler women's basketball as they head into their semifinal matchup. Stay with us on the Bulldog Blitz. The women's basketball team is headed back to the semifinals in the Horizon League Championship after the quarterfinal game on Wednesday night. I had a chance to talk with former Butler women's basketball player and current HorizonLeague.com analyst for the Bulldogs, Courtney Lickliner. All right, we are here courtside at Hinkle Fieldhouse, joined by Butler women's basketball analyst Courtney Lickliner. And, and Courtney, let's talk about this women's basketball season culminating today in the quarterfinal matchup of this Horizon League tournament. They get the big victory over Detroit. To kind of show what this team is made of. Well, yeah, I mean, this team has shown all season that it's all about senior leadership. And they showed it today. You know, Brittany Bowen got them going in the first half. Chloe Hamilton got in a little foul trouble. Then she comes in in the second half and scores 16 points. I mean, th this team has, you know, really benefited from those seniors stepping up and, and taking control. Courtney, let's talk about some of these seniors. First, you've got to talk about Chloe Hamilton. And, and Chloe shows you time and again why she's that reliable presence on the team. And it's sort of been a journeyman through this, this program. And then the senior season really flourished. It leads the league in field goal percentage and, and shows you today in the second half, scoring 16 points, why she's so dependable. Well, it's amazing what this staff has been able to do with, with undersized post players. You know, uh, last season, you know, Mel Thornton, you know, I mean, player of the year, uh, you know, I was here, you know, still helping out a little bit her freshman year, and I thought, well, I just don't know. And it was just remarkable the change that she made throughout the years to her senior season. And the same can be said for Chloe Hamilton. You know, she's a little bit undersized, but boy, if she doesn't use what she has to the best of her ability, she doesn't take bad shots. She fights for the boards and gets positioned by using her quickness, and she's just really a special player. And then you talk about Brittany Bowen, and you can't really go, go wrong when you talk about Brittany Bowen. 15.5 points per game that leads the team and, and is an all-Horizon League second team, just like Chloe Hamilton in her senior season. Brittany Bowen has really meant a lot to this program. Well, you know, she's, she's just, she's, first of all, she's a great person. You know, she gets it done academically. And then she comes out on the basketball court, and she's just so versatile. She can go left. She can go right. She posts her guards, guards you know, that are undersized that are guarding her. She'll take them down and post them up. She'll bring them back out and hit a three. You know, she just has a lot of things going for her that, that have led to a lot of success here at Butler. And then finally, the, the other senior that I want to talk about is, is an, another senior who won an award. It was the, the sixth player of the year award, and it was Alyssa Pittman who got that honor, 11.8 points per game off the bench, even though she started this last game here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. But Alyssa Pittman, even though she was a transfer, has, has been a bright spot for this Bulldog program. Well, she doesn't try to go outside of what she can do. You know, she knows that she is a three-point shooter, and, and she comes in game in, game out, ready to take those shots. And then... You know, at the same time today, you know, her three wasn't really falling. And so what we saw was her, you know, making the defense stay honest and then taking them to the hole. And she just really plays within herself and within the team concept. Okay, now we've talked about some of the players on this team. But now for the third straight year, they've been the second place team in the Horizon League. And you can't say enough about, you know, how, how tough it is to be consistent in college basketball, men's or, or women's sports. Obviously, Green Bay makes it look easy here on the women's side, but it, it's not that easy. So to get second place three straight years is a testament to this program. Well, it truly is. And, you know, it, and it, you know, it didn't happen overnight. You know, it was a slow climb. Uh, you know, I said earlier today, you know, my first year was Coach Kutcher's first year, and, and we were so excited. We doubled our win total, and that equaled six wins. <laughs> you know, six wins on a season. You think, boy, that's awful. But that was double from the season before. And then that next season, you know, we, we, um, we broke, I think we were 14 and 15 maybe, and then the next season we were 500. So it was a slow and steady climb that, that has gotten them to where they are. And now the next step is to, you know, slay the dragon that is Green Bay. <laughs> Well, you're right, but one stop before they get there, and that's the semifinal game. Now, taking on Cleveland State, the three seed in the tournament, what, what do you expect in that matchup? Cleveland State, a dangerous team, was battling for that second spot right down to the stretch. Well, I definitely expect it to be a battle. You know, um, 
it, it's been really even, you know, throughout the years between Cleveland State and, and Butler. And, you know, Cleveland State can come into Hinkle and steal a game, and Butler can go to Cleveland State and steal a game. So I expect it to really be a battle. And, and they are somewhat similar teams. They, they can hurt you in the post, but they can also pull it back out and hurt you from the three-point line, which is, you know, exactly what Butler does. So it will really be an interesting matchup. And finally, when you talk about that Green Bay team in that Horizon League championship, boy, they're dangerous. 11th ranked team in the nation, 18-0 in Horizon League play. Only lost one game this season. It was by less than two points to, to Marquette. You know, I, it's tough to describe how tough this Green Bay program is. Obviously getting the national recognition, but to play the championship on their home court, the Bulldogs definitely have to bring it. Well, that's right. And, and sometimes, you know, you'd like to think it's all you. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, even if you're playing your best game, that's not enough, you know. So you've got to hope for, you know, some things to, to not go Green Bay's way. And and we've seen it before. Green Bay has been upset, you know, um, a couple years ago, I think they were upset. And, and it can happen. Shots can not fall, you know, things can go wrong. And so the Bulldogs, you know, if they're fortunate enough to get to that point, they just need to be ready to play their best and, and hope they get some breaks here and there. And you're right, it was last season, too, that they fell to Cleveland State, which opened the door for the Bulldogs, but eventually they fell to Cleveland State. So they want to get back to that championship and advance the NCAA tournament. It's the second year now, in a, or excuse me, the third year now in a row where they will advance to postseason berth regardless. It's very nice and comforting to know that even if you lose a game in this Horizon League Championship, you don't go to the NCAA tournament, you're at least going to the WNIT. That's right, and, and as seniors, you're always looking for there to be one more game. You just, you never want it to end because the real world out there, you know, gets a little <laughs> scary. And, right. you know, the longer you can play games and have fun, you know, you, you want to keep that going. So it's really nice to know in the back of your mind that you've got that WNIT bid locked up and, and that there will be more postseason play. And finally, my last question for you is, I've sat alongside you here at some of these Butler games all season long. What would you say is your biggest takeaway from, from this season, your first year as the analyst for the women's basketball team? You reflect back a, a lot of different memories, a lot of, a lot of good games and, and some, some tougher games, but, but what do you take away from, from this season? I would have to say the consistent, overall consistent play of the seniors. You know, I, I started to fear I was sounding like a broken record, but it's, <laughs> it was true. Game in and game out, the seniors showed up. They contributed, they led the team, you know, and it was just, it was really remarkable to see them not ever really falter here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. And, and that's what you just come to love and, and expect from, you know, people who've been in the program for four years. When we come back, we'll take a look ahead of the trips for the Butler softball and baseball team next week on spring break. Stay tuned right here to the Bulldog Blitz. This week will be spring break for the students here at Butler, and as a result, the baseball and softball teams will be heading down south for some tournament play. The baseball team was originally scheduled to travel up to the Metrodome in Minnesota, but if you saw that video, the dome collapsed, and they had to change plans to head south. They'll be heading down to Winter Haven, Florida to spend a week down there for spring break to take on Minnesota Duluth, Mount Marty, Akron, Bucknell, Long Island, North Dakota State, and Bradley this week. The softball team will play 10 games in Florida this week at the Rebel Games. Here's who the women will play. Colgate, Manhattan in a doubleheader the first day, then Fairleigh Dickinson, St. Peter's on Monday, Bucknell, Hartford, Akron, Sienna, Ryder toward the end of that trip. That'll just about do it for this week's episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Make sure to catch us on Hoosier TV or online at YouTube.com backslash Bulldog Blitz Sports. Until then, 